Yo, 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 what's up? You know what I'm saying? 2020 is in effect. And it's the first video for 2020. We up here doing it. Kicking it live. You in for yours. And this one's come from the UN. The UNESCO. Which is the United Nations Education and Scientific and Cultural Organization. A World Heritage Convention. So you got a problem with this stuff? You got a problem with them. And take that stuff to them. You know what I'm saying? 2020, 2020, almost this our land have it. But before I get into this, I'd like I say thank you to my ancestors for giving me knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And thank you for y'all for listening, subscribing, viewer, lookership, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Now, this one is the Stone Circus of Gambia. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get deeper to this. This is a great African buildership. The Stone Circus of Gambia. The site consists of four large groups of stone circles that represent an extraordinary concentration over 1,000 monuments in a band of 100 kilometers wide and along some 350 kilometers of the Niger of the River Gambia. The four groups, Santa Rings, Wana, Wasu, and Kabach, cover 93 stone circles into a tumultuous tone and numerous tumultuous burial Mounds. Some have been excavated to reveal the material that suggests date between the 3rd century BC and the 16th century AD. Mm. Together, the stone circles of the pillar piers, pillars and their association burial mounds present a vast sacred landscape created more than over 1500 years and reflected a prosperous, highly organized, and lasting society. Now here's some of the pictures of this, you know, of it right here. You know what I'm saying? The stone circles of Gambia. You know, look at some of the pictures. We ain't gonna get too deep in this. You know what I'm saying? Cause I got some more pictures to show at the end of it. Let's keep on going. Our outstanding universal value. A brief synthesis. The inscribed site corresponds to four large group of megalithic circles located in the extreme western part of West Africa between the River Gambia and the River Senegal. These sites, the Wasu and the Katabak in Gambia and the Winar and the Sinai in Senegal represent an extraordinary concentration of more than 1,000 stone circles Related to a tumor spread over a territory of 100 kilometers wide and 350 kilometers in length along the River Gambia. Together, the four groups comprise of 93 circles and associated sites, which some have been investigated. Some have which been revealed through archaeological material and human burial from pottery to iron instruments and ornamentation dating back to the first and second millennia of our era. These four monolithic sites are the most dense concentrated zone and have an outstanding universal value, representing traditional monument monolith construction spread out of a vast area. More than 1,000 stone circles scattered along the major rivers of Africa. The Sinin Complex, Senegal, is the largest site in the area. It consists of 52 st circles of standing stones, including one double circle. In all, there's 1,102 carved stones on the site. Around one kilometer to the east, outside the subscribed property, there is a quarry from which the monoliths were extracted and where it could be the source of 150 stones can be traced. The site was excavated around 1970 and more recently by Barcombe and Hall. The work established that a single burial period to precede the time and multiple burials associated with the stone circles. The Weinar Complex, Senegal, consists of 21 circles, including one double circle. The site contains six live stones or bib stones, sometimes with a cross priest strung between the two halves. The Washu Complex, Guinea, consists of 11 circles and their association of frontal stones. This site has the highest stones of the area. The most recent investigations concluded that the monolithic stone circles date to the Anglia 
Gambia campaign led by Evans in Orzan in 1964 and 1965. It finds it a barrel and the date of the monuments between 927 and 1305 AD. The Cataplast complex consists of nine circles including a double circle. The site possesses a bit of the stone and the only one known in the area. The stones forming the circles were ejected from nearby leather quarries using iron tools and skillfully shaped and almost identical pillars, either synagogue or polygonal, on average of 2 meters in height and weighed up to 7 tons. Each circle contained between 8 and 14 standing stones having a diameter of 4 to 6 meters. The four metallurgical sites inscribe bear witness to a prosperous and highly organized society with traditions of stone circle constructions associated with burials and persisted over certain areas over more than a millennia. Criteria 1. Individual stones finally carved to bear witness to the exact and experienced technique to contribute to organize, organize and imposing size of the stone circle groups. Criteria 3. The circles of the stones proposed for the inscription represent the totality of the megalith area in which the presence of such large stone numbers of circles is a unique manifestation of a construction and funerary practices which persisted over millennia across a large geographical area reflecting a sophisticated and productive society. Integrity The integrity of the four components of the sites can only be valued as part of a much wider, wider unified cultural complex. The complex conserved their integrity in terms of sporadic associations within the components of circles, individual metalists, and termoli. The spiritual beliefs associated with the stones by the local community help protect their integrity. Authenticity. The stone circles stand in firm landscape. There have been few inventions. Very small number of stones have been removed. Some burial sites have been excavated and subsequently backfilled. The disturbances remain mineral, minimal. The overall authenticity of the four sites is intact. Protection and management requirements. In Gambia, the management of the two sites, the Wasu and the Karabath, fall on the responsibility of the Natural Center of Arts and Culture, the NCAC, in accordance with the law promulgated by the National Assembly the NCAC law of 1989, amended in 2003. The NCAC is dismantled technical section of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture. The daily management of the site is under responsibility of the Director of Cultural Heritage of the NCAC that employs on a permanent basis caretakers and maintenance staff. Both sites have management plans prepared during the nomination process with the participatory collect corporation of local communities and their representatives. The two sites are fenced with long, on four thatched long round buildings built to serve traditional houses and serve the, as a museum and visit reception facilities and lodging for the caretakers. The NCAC has support from local management committees that ensures the interests of the community in the funding sites. Funding is principally, principally provided by the government revenue from the business interest fees and other subventions. In Senegal, the two sites enjoy legal protection. Law number 71-12 of 25th of January 1971 regulating the regime for historical sites and monument investigation and fines, Decree 73-746, of 8th of August 1973, promulgating the law. The Director of Cultural Heritage and Ministry is responsible for management of the sites. The community has also extended power through the law of decentralization facilities, their involvement in the management of the sites. Source, the funding sources are the state budget, local communities, and donor subventions. These funds have enabled the fencing of two sites, the construction of the hall, Walmart, and the welcoming space, visitor sanitary facilities, as well as funding for two full-time caretakers. Good signposting was assigned to accelerate the two sites as well as in interpretation 
center at the center of the ring. In the long-term improvement of the access path is forcing the presentation framework. The management plan was to prepare consultation with the Senegalese and the Gambian stakeholders meeting in Wasu, Gambia, and in Irene, Senegal, December 2004. The long-term objective of this action plan is to render the site visible and accessible and to ensure economic benefits for local communities. Beyond the conservation and enhancement of the site, the management investors conducting in-depth research to enable the site to be better adapt for the development of objects on a national level. So let's go look at these right quick. You know what I'm saying? Here go one of the, here go one of the stones things, what they look like. Used for burial and stuff like that. Let's see if we can pick some more. Here's the one at Senegal. Same cultural difference. You know what? Well, you can see these in Americas too. While you messing around, you can see these in places in Ohio and other places like that. Here's a better view of the Senegal plant in the Senegambia. This was in Senegal. You know, some more of them. But this is what we're talking about, though. You know what I'm saying? Discussing African history, laying it down. Stuff I didn't know about. Also, too, there's pyramids there in West Africa, too, that we got to get to. The British destroyed a lot of them in the 1930s. But this one right here is from the USNO, U-N-E-S-C-O. And if you got a problem with that, yay, yeah, talk to them about it. Anyway, this is Mia Koski of Fun Day. Subscribe to the channel. Getting a lot of love on that. You know what I'm saying? Donate to the movement. You know, cash app at Koski. And, uh, you know, don't be an ass. Hit the like button, you know, because we keep on dropping African history like this every day, all day. Peace.